Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of What's Your Story? Tonight we are sitting down with our friend Nancy Veeman. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We know you're a very busy person, so we appreciate your time. So, Thank you. So we usually ask our guests um, where they grew up and um, how you got to Kennebunkport. So if you want to start there. Yeah. Great. So I grew up in Windsor, Connecticut, mm -hmm. a little bit north of Hartford. And I lived there right through, my home base was there right through college. Mm -hmm. um, every summer we'd go to the beach and I loved the beach and that was my really kind of happy, happy, that happy your, place. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but I went to college first in Hartford, Connecticut, and then to Marymount College in New York, mm -hmm. and then worked there for a while, then moved to Boston, um, where I met Tony, and he introduced me to Kenny Bunkport. Oh. And after we got married, spent several years saying, we should get jobs <laughs> and move to Kenny Bunkport. <laughs> Cape Porpoise, really specifically. Yeah. Um, his family had summered in Cape Porpoise there in Mm -hmm. his youth and entire yeah. life and so that's where we focused on mm -hmm. such a beautiful area mm -hmm. and um it's nice that you know you can still drive down through there and there's not a lot that's some people will say not a lot that's changed but some people will say yeah it kind of has kind of has <laughs> <laughs> so but um and um so you were uh married were you married down there up here we were married in front of Hale White House's fish house oh. on our boat. Oh, how nice. We had a uh, wooden sloop that was named Mindoro, mm -hmm. and um, we got married on the boat. And then oh, nice. motored down to Spicer's Galley, where our friends met us, and we had a reception there. Oh, wow. So, But that was before we moved here. Yeah, yeah. We were living in uh, Auburndale, Massachusetts. Okay, and what were you doing there? I worked, um, well, I had started out working in college admissions and then got involved with career counseling yeah. and worked at Newton College, at the time Newton College of the Sacred Heart, which is now Boston mm -hmm. College, yeah. and another Mass Bay Community College. And uh, so I was doing that, and Tony was working in the Newton schools. And he was sort of doing the same, he was doing a lot of counseling as well. Counseling, teaching. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's. I think that's what I remember of when I first met him. Yeah, um, when he would come in and do readings upstairs yes. and talking about his mm -hmm. his days there. So that was. So you would go home at night and sort of chill out, and not talk about things that right. happened at school. <laughs> yeah. So, and and um, then we thought when we were thinking to move up here, we wanted to move up before our two younger children. Tony had an older child, Danny, who mm -hmm. now is very integrated into the yeah. Cape Corpus, yes, Kenny Bunkport is. community. Yeah. But our two younger ones, um, Amy and Greg, had not yet started school. Greg was two and Amy was four. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so it was a good time to yeah. make the transition so yeah. that she could start school here. Yeah. Did they stick around here? Uh, they're both in San Diego. So that's why you go <laughs> to why San go. Diego. Smart yeah. woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and poor Danny gets stuck here plowing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And taking care of our house. <laughs> and taking care of your house, yeah. So um, so what, what's the time frame that you're in San Diego? Um, usually mid-December through March. Okay. Yeah. And what do you do when you're out there? I've never a lot been. Of, mm -hmm. Well, they live just about 20 minutes north of San Diego in a town called Del Mar, which is a mm -hmm. beach community, mm -hmm. um, sort of like this yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um, but I do a lot of school pickups. Yes. <laughs> the children. <laughs> and a lot of time with them just to be part of their lives. Yeah. Um, I volunteer a little bit at Torrey Pines State Park, yeah. um, pulling invasive grasses. Mm -hmm. um, and spend actually quite a bit of time going to the library and getting books and going to the beach and reading. Good for you. <laughs> Which is nice. That, that is so nice. Yeah. And then you get back here and it's kind of almost spring and daffodils and tulips yeah. are starting to poke up. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And so when you're back here, you do a lot of volunteering at Lot Home Farm? Well, some, yeah. Because yeah. so, I had worked there for 18 years. Okay. Um, doing, um, I coordinated the volunteer programs and visitor services. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was great. I mean, ma mainly my job I looked at as kind of connecting volunteers and entertaining volunteers yeah. and making sure they had a good time right. uh, when they came. Yeah. And recruiting uh, staff to go to the beach with me at lunch and <laughs> take a swim <laughs> in the summer <laughs> and cross country ski and all that. So, yeah, I was so very involved yeah. there. And so I still, when I retired, still wanted to stay involved. So I yeah. did that. Can you talk a little bit about Lot Homes, like how it's made up and um, like funding and the acreage and, yeah. and that sort of thing? Yeah. It, uh, it had been a farm for mm -hmm. about, eight, about 300, over 300 years. In the late 70s, the family was going to sell, mm -hmm. and it was the Lord family who were connected to the Kenny Bunkport okay. you know, Lords. Yeah. Um, George C. Lord bought it in 1881, and he was the president of the Boston Main Railroad. Um, wow. So it was always kind of a gentleman's farm, but a working mm -hmm. farm. Mm -hmm. And in the late 70s, when they were going to sell, a local group got together and said, you know, we've got to protect that land and those mm -hmm. buildings. And they formed Laud Home Trust. Um, in looking for funding, they learned that the federal government, through NOAA, was looking for mm -hmm. a site for a national estuary reserve. Yeah. And there's a river and an estuary on either side of the property. Yeah. So NOAA, they applied to NOAA. Um, NOAA designated, selected that site and designated it as a National Estuary Reserve. Okay. Um, and that gave it a focus for research and education, yeah. um, stewardship, yeah. um, and it also brought in money. And mm -hmm. it continues to bring money, mm -hmm. but that money has to be matched, and the match comes from the private nonprofit. Okay. So that's, you know, that's kind of how, how it's funded. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funded through private donations and, you know, the Nature Crafts Festival, which right. is the weekend after Labor Day, yeah. and weddings and you know events, and yeah. so it's a pretty neat place. I mean, today I had a group when I was volunteering who were from Saco, a walking group. They'd never been there. Oh wow! So, so that was neat. Yeah. So the like the you speak of Saco, the ecology school. Do they bring mm -hmm. you know students there at all or? They may have, but yeah. probably not. But a lot of the local schools okay. bring field trips. Yeah. So or they did closer, until COVID, yeah, and yeah. now they're coming back. Coming back. So Yeah. And um, they're learning about, what, erosion? Yeah, they're nesting, learning about... Footprint, that um, sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Yep, they're learning about the nature that surrounds mm -hmm. the reserve. They're learning about the value of estuaries, salt marsh, mm -hmm. you know, the land, invasive species, all that, the birds that are there. Wow. Yeah. So um, I've got some Phragmites in my backyard. Mm -hmm. would you tell, could you tell me how to pull those out? <laughs> they're invasive. <laughs> they're very invasive. Yeah, they're invasive. And the thing with Phragmites <laughs> is they grow underground through rhizomes, so mm -hmm. it's really hard to get them out. Yeah, it's my husband is like, I wouldn't say obsessed, but he yeah. they're just they keep creeping. They do keep creeping. Tall. I noticed years ago it <laughs> seemed like Route Nine between Cape Porpoise and Consolidated was full of um, cattails. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden driving down one fall I realized where do they go? They're all Phragmites now. Oh. So, so they really just kinda Yeah. Devastated the Yeah. The oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, and there, I mean, there are stands of them everywhere, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, yeah. So, what, is, so when, what are some of the other ones that you find besides, like, something like that? Well, a lot of Japanese Barbary. Okay. That's one we don't like. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I'm noticing even in, my, in our yard, there are some Japanese Barbary starting, because mm -hmm. um, we have, you know, rocks and marsh in front of our house mm -hmm. and uh so we have how... school trips coming oh you do property yeah oh, okay yeah years ago we gave um kind of a license to the mm -hmm. conservation trust to bring consolidated school students yep. and high school students 
um, through our property to go out to the islands at low tide. So it's kind of fun, you know, because we would have a school bus pull up with 45 kids. and Yeah. Oh, how fun. Out they'd come and they'd head out to the islands. And, and did you give them, did you help with that? Well, or? Tony was the one who yeah. mostly helped mm -hmm. with those programs. But um, then, you know, I would when I could and then COVID hit. But th yeah. starting last year, they started coming back. That's good. And, you know, in front of, just almost in front of our house was where, a little bit off to the right, was where the 700-year-old canoe was discovered. Oh. So there's a lot of archaeological work being done out uh -huh. there. Did Tony, I know he's written a bunch of children's books and mm -hmm. we have those here. Did he ever get to write about a story about that or? No, no, not about that. Mm -mm. Well, I think that might be in you then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not no. the writer. <laughs> did I you, wish. Did you help him with his his? I did a lot all? of the editing. You did, okay. And I did a lot of the entry because he was not one who... Yeah was uh, comfortable using mm -hmm. computers. Yeah. So I did that. <laughs> wow. So you played a big part in yeah. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the gull story, um, the seagull story, I think was one, maybe when I was working upstairs and he came in and uh, he worked with Linda Bryant mm -hmm. uh, and yep. did, some, did some reading up there and um, we were talking about, you know, we, we just started talking about different seagull stories that, mm -hmm. I mean, half an hour later, because there's so many. <laughs> I know. There's so many. Everybody has experience, you know, with having a gull swoop over their shoulder, take, you know, whatever take a they're sandwich. eating, yeah. you know, drop it down in front of them and start eating it you know, <laughs> when you're the one who's hungry. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And they seem to get a little bit more... Um, brave as time goes on yeah. so well and people feed them at the beach and yeah. that's every time i see that i want to say please you know it just encourages them right. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and you can see like when when you're near a like a fast food mm -hmm. restaurant or something that's like you know um along the shore they're, mm -hmm. they're like mm -hmm. this big Mm -hmm. So they get a lot of fries. Mm -hmm. and, you well, know, look at the clam thinking. shack. You exactly. know, people standing on the bridge. You know? Just throwing them out there. Yeah. <laughs> throwing them French fries. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you are also uh, one of our portside readers. Mm -hmm. So um, that's really uh, been fun to have you all here um, every month recording. And, yeah. um, and so our producer, Mike Kelly, gets you all lined up and in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, that's been really fun to have yeah, you Yeah, I want to get back to that. that. So um, are there other organizations that you um, volunteer for in the area? Um, you know, I try to do some things with the Conservation Trust yeah. and always think I'd like to do more. Mm -hmm. um, life and yes. family visiting yeah. <laughs> gets in the way yeah. of some of that, but yeah. <laughs> Um, and so when you head out to um, San Diego, you get out there and do they have like a, here's your plan, this is what you're going to do? No. Or they just kind of let you no. I, yeah. chill out and then it just yeah. starts to roll into, yeah. yeah, that's so great. Yeah. And it must be fun to um, be part of that um, with the kids. Um, what are their ages right um, now? The oldest one, Kira, who Tony dedicated um, shenanigans of slim pickings too mm -hmm, when she was mm -hmm. really an infant she's yeah. now 11 oh wow and um maddie her sister is 10 mm -hmm. and then our son greg has two boys yeah porter who's eight and eddie who just turned seven oh, last wow. weekend so, so they're all pretty you know and yeah. they're um they're cousins and they live in the same mm -hmm. town so they are back and forth together all the time and oh wow see each other you know they're they're kind of like brothers and sisters, yeah. and they also fight like brothers and sisters. So, <laughs> so um, it was the two girls that were here with you this summer? Yeah, the, the two girls read um, both Whales Are Amazing and Slim Pickens. That must have been Kira really... wanted to read Slim Pickens because she said, that one was dedicated yeah. to me, and Maddie <laughs> wanted to read Whales Are Amazing because that was dedicated to her. <laughs> And the, and the other book, the Monarch Butterfly mm -hmm. book, that one was really special, too, because yeah. you actually had, you took time with that? Well, Tony discovered a monarch in our backyard mm -hmm. that had a broken wing, and he took care of it for 18 days, and he took lots of photos, and 
then wrote a book about mm -hmm. taking care of Tiger, the monarch butterfly mm -hmm. who couldn't fly. <laughs> and it was cute because people have said, oh, you know, we found a monarch and we brought it in and we made a little house for it and we found milkweed and yeah. We, um, we use that book a lot when really? we're um, with, the, with the kids that come in because, you know, there's just been such a strange, the, you know, not as many, you don't see as many. Yeah. Um, and, you know, everybody wanted the milkweed to disappear and, yeah. you know, all of the other things that kept them going. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that it's coming back. Yeah. But I think that, I mean, that book was really helpful or yeah. is really helpful to... Yeah. You know, make people understand. That. Well, in the Monarchs, this year there were some. Mm -hmm. um, there was one year, I think I counted not more than five on one hand. Mm -hmm. I just did not see them. The next year, they, they were a bit better, mm -hmm. but I think there was just a internationally, it's, yeah. it's tough for yeah. them. Yeah. I was at a friend's house in um, Biddeford Pool, and it was like, I think like early October. Mm -hmm. This was a few years back. And it happened to the, be the day that they were migrating. Oh, that's exciting. And he lives up on, well, his, his reverse floor plan. And mm -hmm. so we were standing in his living room, which was on the second floor. And they're all flying by the window. And yeah. I said, what is happening? Yeah. It looked like a storm. Yeah. It was so beautiful. Yeah. And um, I, never, I don't know if I'll ever see that again, but how cool yeah. was that to just see their heading? Yeah, you know? I know. I went out to the lighthouse one day with taking some people out um, in our kayaks, and it was a day like that where one of the inland passages out to Goat Island, mm -hmm. they were just everywhere, and they wow. were everywhere on the bushes out there. Getting ready to go to Mexico. Yeah, <laughs> that was a couple years ago. And then this year, my friend Annie Heidel was on Monhegan, and she, she sent me a photograph and mm -hmm. said... Monarch migration time. And then a couple of days later, I was walking on Goose Rocks Beach. Mm -hmm. And one by one, monarchs were flying into the beach. And I thought, I wonder if they're coming from Monhegan. <laughs> you know? Maybe. And Maybe. then a few days after that, or a week after that, I was over at Kennebunk Beach. And it was like a parade of monarchs oh. going south. Just kept flying by and flying Isn't by. Isn't that cool? Along with dragonflies. Mm -hmm. And I've learned, and I didn't realize this, but dragonflies also have a long migration. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know it. They don't last too long, right? I guess not, but they go, I think I read somewhere 800 miles or so. But Oh, wow. And I wondered, do they travel with the monarchs? Because the day at Kennebunk Beach, they were all headed sort of the together. same way, That's kind of together. So I want to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. See, you got a couple books yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You got to get those granddaughters to sit down with you and maybe that's what you can do this winter mm. let's keep keep, they, keep yeah, those yeah. stories coming yeah <laughs> yeah a good way to honor tony too mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so oh yeah um and uh where you live um you're in cape porpoise and um that's i mean that's an area that we've we've talked a lot about in um the news here in town about like water rising yeah. and are mm -hmm. you in an area that's a little sketchy or well yes and no I mean our house is up a little bit higher mm -hmm. because of the topography yep so when we get a really high tide um, it has come it, it, there was a berm that developed mm -hmm. in front of our house yep. after the 1978 storm okay so it built up this natural berm yeah that Usually the tides don't come over that. I have seen a couple times. Yeah, yeah, them coming over that. But you know, I think we're in pretty good shape well, housewise. But you know, so much of it, mm -hmm. Cape Porpoise, and now you know the talk or the plan to raise the causeway because right. that floods. Yep. Yeah. Well, hopefully they'll get that underway pretty soon. Yeah. Because that could be, and hopefully they do it high enough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I live down in uh, Camp Ellis. And so mm -hmm. we're by that, you know, that jetty. Mm -hmm. that, and that's always been just such trouble there. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, that's different than flood. Yeah. So, you know, but, it's a different kind of, mm -hmm. you know, um, erosion and, and trouble. But 
Um, it's 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 scary. It is scary. So, it is scary. Yeah. I know. I know. Our house is kind of vulnerable to the nor'easters because oh, right. of the way the islands, yep. you know, are situated. So we can, you know, get the yeah. the heavy winds and everything. Yeah. Wow. But you just get out of town and go to San Diego. <laughs> Mm. Now, do they, um, when they, when you're out there, like, do you go to the zoo or? Yeah, I've not, You know, I that's one place I would really like to go is, yeah, is the I zoo hear is, a lot about San Diego, though, in general. Yeah, the zoo is good. Um, every na- I used to get our daughter a membership and mm-hmm. our son, you know, and we'll go. But then they, then they get saturated mm-hmm. a bit. So yeah. usually once or twice a year yeah. we go. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot, I mean, the San Diego waterfront is pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. There's a nice maritime museum yep. um, that's all on the water, yep. different ships. Oh, nice. Um, all the museums are in a place called Balboa Park. And yep. that's, that's kind of neat. And they, every Sunday they have um, an outdoor, huge, one of the biggest organs in the United States. Um, their free concerts Sunday afternoons. Oh, wow. And San Diego and Portland, Maine are the only two cities in the country that have civic or- organists who are employed by the cities. Huh. So is that the Kutchmeyer? Is that the... That's the one in Portland. That's the one in Portland. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the Spreckles is the one in oh, San Diego. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of cool that you could go to both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I'm just, you know, outside all the time when I'm there, as yeah. I am here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Well, I just, I mean, I love your energy. I love your, um, your enthusiasm. Every time you come in, you're, you <laughs> always have such a spring in your step. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. And, and we really appreciate all you do um, for Lot Home because I know that, you know, there's, it's, it's hard to find time um, to volunteer, but it's really important. Yeah, and, it's fun. And it's fun. It's so. fun. I mean, vol- working with volunteers, and you know, working with volunteers is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they know, really want to be there. Yeah, they want to be there, and you want to connect them. And, you know, it's a wonderful way. Um, I used to find in my role at Laud Home, you know, when people would be newly retired, mm-hmm. it was a wonderful way to keep people yeah. utilizing their skills. Right. People moving into town, sometimes it's a wonderful way for them to connect with other people. Yeah. And to have purpose. Yeah. You know, and to... that's, you know, that was what I loved doing. I, you know, with whether it was career counseling mm-hmm. or whatever, it's connecting people with yeah. other people or resources. And like you said, you wanted to make it fun for yeah. them. So yeah. that's, re- that's really important. Yeah. They would laugh at me <laughs> I'd come back from the beach at noontime with my bathing suit on. <laughs> when oh, I retired so... from the Wells Reserve, um, Paul, the reserve director, called Tony and said, what can we get, Nancy? He said, nothing in a box. So (laughs) they gave me some gift certificates to Joshua's and to Mm -hmm. the Blue Hill Inn. And then they wrapped up in a blanket that I think was Karen Stathopoulos's, this thing about that long. And it was a wooden plaque. And it says, Veeman's Way, which they put at the entrance to the beach. Oh, how cool. So it's still there. Oh, I'm glad. It better be still there. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. Um, so as we wind down our discussion, we have a little rapid fire, mm-hmm. one word answer mm-hmm. ending. Game for that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> They're pretty easy. Um, favorite color? Yellow. Okay. Uh, favorite movie? Um, what about Bob? Oh, that's a good one. Um, favorite book? Um, hmm. That's a tough forgotten. one. But you know, I just I just finished Caleb's Crossing. Okay, and I loved that. Yeah, yeah. Um, favorite restaurant? Joshua's, which Joshua's. unfortunately oh, now closed. Such a bummer. That is <laughs> no. such a bummer. I understand. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I understand just, too. But, but yeah. it's very sad for the rest of us. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, coolest place you've ever been? Um, probably... Probably... Some places in Australia when oh, Tony and I went. Oh, okay. 
Nice. Were you there for a long time? About three weeks. Three weeks, okay. Yeah. That, that's yeah. going to give or you... Or maybe a... New Zealand. You know, yeah. pretty cool. But, you know, nothing can compare, in a way, with Goose Rocks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or, and yeah, uh, yeah. I love, you know, we went to St. John a couple times in the Virgin Islands. I love yeah. that because I love to snorkel. Yep. Um, and they have a nice... So there's so many. Camping presence there, is it St. They did. Jean? When we went, we yeah. stayed. But I don't know if they, that's happening anymore. Yeah, yeah. And if somebody, a family that was coming into town, um, saw you on the beach and they wanted to know, you know, what would be really something good for us to do while we're here on vacation? Would you have any advice for them? Well, I would say to them, you know, to be outside, go to the mm -hmm. beaches, walk the trails of the Conservation Trust, go yep. to Laud Home. Um, you know, sometimes... I find people really just want to know where to shop. <laughs> right, right. But, but they but need I'm to gonna, know this stuff too because yeah, I think they do. Yeah, I think it's really important yeah, they do. for um, for the, the exploration, especially around yeah. here because it's just so beautiful. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Um, what are the hours of the of Lot Home when they're um, the trails are open pretty much open every day every day every okay. day okay. from seven a.m. to sunset. Yep. And the visitor center is open seasonally, so okay. um, the end of this week is actually the end of the visitor center, yep. except for special times during school vacations mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but normally, like during the season, it's 10 to 3.30 or 4. Okay. Well, that's good to but know. But the trails are open every day. And, you know, if there's snow, they're great for cross-country skiing. Yep. Um, snowshoeing. So there's a little bit for everything yeah. all through the year. Yeah. Everybody, I should say. Yeah. Um, my niece had her wedding there back in 2019, and it was one of the most special. Oh, yeah. I mean, what a spa. Yeah. So, yeah. and, you know, I think just for knowing that so that people could yeah. um, plan for that to go there and just be, you know. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. It really is. It's magical. It's magical. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so You're much welcome. for being with us today. Fun. <laughs> we love your sweater, by the thank way. Thank you. Nanny <laughs> Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for being with us um, here on What's Your Story? And we'll see you back next time. Thank you. Thank you.